Shalom, and welcome to another edition here on Genesis 49ers, where we say no to vague interpretations, and we give you thorough breakdowns. Today's topic is a hot topic. Hosea, chapter 7, verse 8. Because we use this scripture to explain the color diversity between the Hispanic and Native Indigenous tribes, okay? Because if you if you examine those people as a race, you can see there is a color discrepancy or diversity, if you will, because there are there are many colors, different shades of brown. Some are dark, dark dark tone, West African looking, and some are light light that can pass for Caucasians. <coughs> as long as they come from Negro to Indian ancestry, they are Israelites on their father's side. Okay? So, with that being stated, we use the scripture to show this, but you have scoffers that say, oh, no, this is not talking about um, Ephraim mixing with the other people and having children or strange children or black and light-skinned children. No, this is not talking about that. So, we're going to break this down thoroughly today. No more vain interpretations as, as I stated as the slogan of my channel is so Hosea 7 verse 8 it reads Ephraim he had mixed himself among the people so you can already see that the subject is Ephraim and the action that's being taken place here the, the uh, subject matter that's being talked spoke about is he have mixed among the people mixing among the people mingling among the people it's telling you right there uh, the word for mix in Spanish, what, the mestizo? The mestizo, right? This scripture is talking about misogyny, right? Or misogyny, however you say it. The mixing of people. It's telling you right there, Ephraim is a cake not turned. And right after that, it says Ephraim is a cake not turned. Because what happens when you take a cake and you don't turn it? One side becomes very black and the other side is like raw and doughy and light. So the Lord is comparing, is saying Ephraim is a cake not turned from him mixing among the people it's very simple to get what people say no that's not what it's talking about so what we're going to do let's go to hosea chapter five right and we're going to read one through three let's see if it goes one through three and then verse seven is the is the punchline is is the point right so it's just gonna be one through three we're going to read it first to get the subject. It says, Hear ye this, O priest, and hearken, ye house of Israel, and give ye ear, O house of the king, for judgment is towards you, because ye have been a snare on Mizpah, and a net spread upon Tabar, Tabor. And the revolters are profound to make slaughter, though I have been a rebuke of them all. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. What is whoredom? Sexual immorality. Okay. Let's see what type of whoredom Ephraim committed. Right? Because we read in chapter 7 about them mixing amongst the people. But let's get to the punch, right? Hosea chapter, same chapter, chapter 5 and verse 7. They have dealt treacherously, treacherously against the Lord. Who have dealt treacherously? Ephraim, the northern kingdom, against the Lord. Which Ephraim represents... On the Western Hemisphere, the Northern Kingdom, which is the Hispanics of Negro and Indian descent, the Native Indians, the Indios of Negro and Indian descent, they represent the Northern Kingdom. They were the people that came to Arthur. They are the people. Ephraim says he would push his people to the ends of the earth in Deuteronomy 33. Okay, Deuteronomy 33 said he pushed his people to the ends of the earth. Ends of the earth is where the Western Hemisphere. Period. It says they have dealt treacherously against the Lord. For they have begotten strange children. How did they begotten strange children? Through their whoredom. Ephraim was committing whoredom. Okay, he was breaking the commandment and he was taking other wives. He was mixing amongst the people. It's right here. For they have begotten strange children. Now shall a mouth devour them with their portions. So that mouth will be Assyria at this time. Okay. <clears throat> so the scriptures tell you they begotten strange children. What does that mean? When the scriptures talk about strange wives, what is that talking about? Wives of the other nations. When it's talking about strange children, strange-looking children. Why? Because they mix amongst the people. 
Hosea 5 and 7 says they have begotten, meaning born, strange children. So when you go back to Hosea 7 and 8, this is why precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here, here a little and there a little. Hosea 7 and 8, Ephraim he had mixed himself among the people. Doing so, he had begotten what? Strange children, according to what? Hosea 5 and 7. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Meaning one side will be black and one side will be white. They will say, oh, if you read earlier, it's not talking about, it's talking about the destruction. So we're going to read the whole chapter, well, Hosea 7, 1 through 8. And read it in its context. Because this has been an ongoing debate for some time. And when I was a part of an organization, a lot of brothers asked me questions. and say, hey, brother, just read 1 through 8. Read the whole chapter. You're going to get the understanding. So Hosea 7, 1 through 8. <coughs> Excuse me. When I, when I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and wickedness of Samaria. For they commit falsehood and the thief cometh in and the troop of robbers spoileth without. That's the other nations. At this time, the Assyrians. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. They make the king glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers. So what is the key point here? Adultery. What is adultery? Sexual sin, sexual immorality outside, outside the laws of marriage. Breaking the laws of marriage. As an oven heated by the baker. So he's comparing adulterer, adultery to an oven heated by a baker. Who seizes from raising after he have kneaded the dough until it be leavened. So he said they have, they are all adulterers as an oven heated by the baker, right? Who seizes from raising after he had kneaded the dough until it be leavened, until it rises, until it's finished. Meaning what? One side is very dark, one side is light. And that's what we have within the mestizo community, the indigenous community. Even this is even in the quote unquote American Negro community, even in the Yoruba and Igbo community, you have these type of people that are quote unquote passed as a light skin of African and indigenous descent. It's irrefutable. You have red Igbos, okay? How did you get them? How did you get red Igbos? How did you get red Yorubas? Okay, or oh, they call them cocoa over there. Right? We study and we learn to teach. We can clearly see what this is talking about. So adultery is, is, is compared to an oven heated by a baker. Remember that. Who sees it from raising after he kneaded the dough until it be leavened. In the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners. So he stretched out his hand with scorners, that, with, with wicked men, with other nations. Because when you... um. Read the book of Hosea. They tried to get allegiance with the Egyptians and Assyrians. <clears throat> and that's who they were mixing with too at this time. Verse 6. For they have made ready the heart like an oven. What is the oven referring to? Adultery. The baker, the other nations. While as they lie in wait, their baker sleepeth all night. Meaning they're having sex all night. Okay? That's why they're sleeping. In the morning, it burneth as a flame and fire. They are all hot as an oven. What does the oven signify? You go back to verse 4. They are all adulterers as an oven heated by the baker. It's talking about the act of adultery. Sexual immorality. This is talking about sex. That's the context. They are all hot as an oven and have devoured their judges and all their kings have fallen. To what? Adultery. They all become adulterers. There is none among them that calleth unto me. Why? Because they're not referencing the Most High's commandments. Because the commandment tells us not to mix with the other nation. Ephraim, he hath mixed among the people. How? Back to verse 4. They are all adulterous. That's how he mixed among the people. Through adultery. As an oven heated by the baker. That's why it says heart has became an oven. Their heart is like an oven. Their mind is like an oven. Heated by the baker. It says, Ephraim he had mixed among the people through what? Adultery. We just read the whole context from 1 through 8. Ephraim is a cake not turn. Just like we read earlier. Who sees it from raisin after he needed the dough until it be leavened. Ephraim is black 
in Ephraim is light. Some of them can pass for quote unquote Caucasian. Even in the Negro American Negro community, you have people that can pass like logic. His father is black, and his mother is a so quote unquote Caucasian. He's a passer for a Caucasian. He looks like a Caucasian. Vin Diesel, his father's black. Okay? Many, many, many of uh, um examples we can show to exemplify that. Right? Let me get verses nine. Because it says something very and very pertinent to the subject matter. It says, strangers had devoured his strength. Through what? Adultery. That's why I said your kings had fallen. By committing adultery with these strangers, you have begotten the strange children in Hosea 5 and 7. We're going to get it again. Strangers had devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yet gray hairs are here, and they're upon them. Yet he knoweth not, meaning they get old. They have gotten old in this land, especially in America. They have gotten old, and they don't know their history. They don't know what happened to them. A lot of them think they're just Oh, we're, we're, we're Spaniards. Oh, oh we're, we're this, we're that. They're confused. A lot of our people don't know who they are because of all this adultery and mixing. Okay? It says, yay, gray hairs are here and there upon them. That's why they came up with the, the black. They took our, during the 1800s, they, they took a lot of the indigenous people that were of Negroid color. Their skin was black. They took away their rights to the land and rights to their, tri their tribal recognition on the fact on the basis of the false pseudoscience called the one drop rule oh if you have one uh african ancestor or one one drop of uh, blood african blood in you you can't be an indian that goes into this he, he, he it says yay gray hairs are here and there upon him yet he knows if not he don't know the strangers had devoured his strength through mixing through those strange children they have. They grow old in this land, not knowing this. Again, let's go back to Hosea 5 and 7. So that's the prerequisite to Hosea 7. Hosea 5 and 7. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children. Strange children. Excuse me. Now shall a mouth devour them with their portions. How did they fail in Hosea 7? They fell through adultery. When it's talking about they mixed among the people, it's talking about adultery. Sexual sin, sexual immorality. They had sex with the other nations. And produced mixed children. Mestizos. That's what the word mestizos mean. Mixed. Deuteronomy 28 61 tells you. No, verse 30. Deuteronomy 28 30 tells you. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell there. And so the point I want, thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. That mixing is a curse. And this is why a lot of our people are confused, because they're basing everything upon color. Color is not a race. Everything is not based upon phenotype and how you look phenotypically. Genomes and phenotype do not match 100% of the time. That's science. That's fact. It's called incomplete penetrance. Look it up. We're the same people, but we're very diverse. That speckled bird. That speckled bird is scientifically correct for all these people that want to claim science. Because speckled bird, they, the birds look phenotypically different but they're still the same breed. They're still the same, the same race. And that's how we are as uh, quote unquote African Americans, quote unquote Latinos, quote unquote Native Indians of indigenous Negro background on their father's side. We deal with the patrilineal. So let's deal with Hosea 7 and 8 again. Hosea chapter 7 verse 8. Ephraim, he had mixed himself among the people through what? We read early, adultery. Ephraim is a cake not turned. One side is very dark and one side is very light. That's why I'm going to do a separate video about the dark Indians that ran away into the mountains and never mixed with the conquistadors. I'm going to say that again. A video will be uploaded on Genesis 49ers dealing with the native Indians that never mixed 
with the conquistadors. You have the Hibaros of Puerto Rico, of Puerto Rico, okay? You have the, the Indian sect of Northwest Mexico that head into the mountains, okay? You have the Mestizo population, okay? And many more of, of the Bushnigwees of South America. And what do they look like when you pull up pictures? They are dark skinned. A lot of them maintain their woolly hair. So again, Ephraim, he had mixed among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Now, and, and clearly, you can see within the artwork, the, the artwork of the Aztecs, the Mayans, and different sects of, of Indians, that they had dark populations, Negroid populations and features. But a lot of people are going to dis dis disregard that. What happened to him? Hosea 7 and 8, Ephraim, he had mixed among the people. This happened during the time of the Assyrians, the Medes, when we were uh, around the Greeks, okay? Japheth seed, Esau seed, because we were sold to Esau during the time of Amos, during the time of Uzziah, the king of Judah, and Jeroboam, the king of the northern kingdom, Israel. We were sold to Edom by the hands of Tyrus. And we know Esau is a so-called white man. This mixing go back to, to those times. Back to 700 B.C. Okay? You got to understand the historical and archaeological importance of this. And the records behind this. Now, I'm going to go back. Let's jump in the time machine. Let's go all the way back to the 1800s. Right? Let's go back to the 1800s. And let's deal with these gospel songs. This is from... You should see on my screen, this is from the Gospel Sonnets of Spiritual Songs, the 18th edition, by Rath Erksine. And this was around the 18, 1700s when this was released, when this was published, as you can see on your stream. Now listen to the lyrics to this. It says, for like my black but comely face. So what is it dealing with? A Negroid person. My name is sin. My name is grace. Most fitly, I'm, I, I'm assimilate. I'm various things inanimate. A standing lake, a running flood, a fixed star, a passing cloud, a cake unturned, nor cold nor hot, a vessel found, a broken pot. Why does it say this? Why does it, this is talking about a black person. This is... Within the the hymns or the uh, spiritual songs in the 1700s, most likely slaves probably sung this. A cake unturned. This is dealing with mixing of people of, of a dark skinned people, okay? Becoming whiter, right? We can see that. And that again, gospel song as a spiritual song, the 18th edition by Ralph Erkstein, 1700s. One last scripture, and I pray you brothers got the understanding of Hosea 7. Oh, let's go to Amos chapter 7, <coughs> verse 17, because this, the book of Amos is also written um, to the northern kingdom. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, thy wife shall be an harlot in the city. Thy wife shall be a harlot in the city. Now sons and daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by land. Thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of its land. This happened during the Assyrians, and also happened during the time of the conquistadors. Through all our captivities. The Aztecs have recorded that they were betrayed by Malinche, and also the Texacoco, the Texacocoans, right? Those of those that tribe, they, they sided with the the conquistadors and brought against the Aztecs and different tribes, right? So with that, I'm going to conclude the lesson. I pray, <coughs> excuse me, that you brothers understand the material and what I brought out today. Hosea 7 8 is referring to the mestizos, to, to the dark and light population of Ephraim, and also... This same thing happened to the North American Negro. They're very diversified in color as well, as I exemplified earlier in my video. 
Subscribe for more videos, like, comment, share, 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 share on the social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, etc. Genesis 49ers. Genesis 49ers. Where we don't deal with vague interpretations, we give you thorough breakdowns. Subscribe for more. Genesis 49ers signing out.